guys, this is Haley from OneOnRabbits.com and today I'm going to be doing another bonding video for you guys. In this video, I'm going to be going over all the different bonding behaviors that you might encounter and what to do with them when you do encounter them. So let's just go ahead and get started because there's a lot of behaviors to cover. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the most common behavior that you will encounter when bonding and that is humping. Humping is how rabbits show dominance. Depending on the rabbits you are bonding, some rabbits will take turns humping each other to try to establish who is going to be dominant. But in other cases where you have a very submissive rabbit and a very dominant rabbit, one rabbit will do the majority of the humping. Either way, humping is a very normal behavior when bonding and it's actually something that you should allow to happen. If you constantly do not allow a rabbit to hump each other, they will never be able to establish who is going to be dominant. However, this is something that needs to be done with caution because there are rules around humping to make sure it doesn't get out of hand. Sometimes it feels like the humping lasts forever and the rabbits will never stop humping each other. Um, it definitely depends on the rabbits you are bonding. Sometimes it feels like it just lasts forever. Other times it's not a big deal. Um, but just know that it is a common behavior and these are just the following rules that you should establish. Uh, when your rabbits are humping to keep everyone safe. So first off, if the humping is lasting more than a few seconds, you do want to push the top rabbit off. However, you do not want to use your hands. You always want to use something uh, like a dustpan. That's what I always use. It's like a plastic dustpan. Uh, you want to be uninvolved in the bonding process as much as possible. Um, one common mistake people do is they put themselves into the bonding situation. This can be problematic because rabbits need to figure out who is dominant on their own. And if there's a human in there, that is gonna be changing the dynamic. So you need to be separated from the bonding process as much as possible. I will go over that more later. But basically that's why you always wanna use a dustpan, not even your hands, even if there's gloves on them. Um, always use a dustpan so it's more impersonal and um, you're not like reaching your hand in there. This is also a safety thing because they can bite you if they are upset. Um, so a dustpan is the best option in my opinion. If the rabbit immediately goes back to humping as soon as you take them off with the dustpan, don't worry, that is normal, that is going to happen. You can allow them to hump again for a couple seconds and push them off and continue. If the rabbit is too fixated on the humping and it's like doing it over and over and over again, sometimes what I do is I hold the dustpan between the two bunnies for a little bit longer so that the rabbit kind of like gets distracted and thinks about something else. Sometimes this works, sometimes this doesn't, um, but you just want to be careful of them humping repeatedly over and over and over again because you don't want the rabbit underneath to get stressed or upset, which could lead to a fight. So it's kind of confusing because you do want humping to happen in order for them to establish dominance, but you do want to set boundaries around it. Another thing you want to stop is if the humping leads to chasing. This happens when the rabbit on top is humping the bottom rabbit the bottom rabbit starts to run away and the top rabbit chases after them. You want to stop chasing whenever possible. Chasing never leads to anything good. However, chasing is very, 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 very common in bonding, so don't freak out if it happens. Just control the situation. So if your rabbit is chasing each other, just stick the dustpan between them so that, you know, like the behind rabbit gets stopped by the dustpan. And again, the rabbit can be very fixated on wanting to hump. You might be sitting there for 10 minutes, continually stopping them chasing, but that's just part of the process. Um, there are other things you can do to try to distract the rabbit by like, you know, making a funny noise and they'll like kind of look at you or something. Again, it's just all part of the process. You just want to keep everyone safe, but also keep out of it as much as possible. Another thing you would want to stop is if the top rabbit is humping the other rabbit's head. The reason you need to stop this is it is very dangerous for the top rabbit as the bottom rabbit can nip the rabbit's private parts. And obviously that area is very, very sensitive and that could lead to a vet trip, um, extreme damage, especially if the top rabbit's a male and something gets bitten off. Like it is not good. So anytime a rabbit tries to mount the rabbit on the head, it's very common. It happens all the time. So don't freak out if it happens just immediately push them off with the dustpan because that is a safety issue. Also remember that the top rabbit will most likely latch onto the bottom rabbit's fur with their mouth. Um, this is common behavior and it's not an issue unless you were to let your rabbit 
you know, hump for an excessive amount of time. Um, the longer they hump, the more they're gonna like bite down. So that's why you only wanna let the humping last a couple of seconds and then gently push them off with the dustpan. Another behavior you are going to encounter when bonding is chasing. Like I did mention earlier, chasing uh, is going to happen, but you do want to stop it because chasing leads to frustration, which can lead to uh, your rabbit lashing out or potentially fighting. So all chasing needs to be stopped as soon as it starts. And you can do this by, you know, putting a dustpan between them. Um, otherwise you can try to distract them. Um, sometimes the chasing just goes on and on and on and you need to find, you know, another thing to kind of distract them. I sometimes play like really weird noises on YouTube and the rabbit will like look it up and like kind of get distracted from the chasing and then they kind of forget about it. This doesn't tend to work as well if uh, one of the rabbits is deaf, uh, which is what I encountered uh, the last time I was bonding. Um, you know, a lot of lop rabbits can be deaf or hard of hearing, so this doesn't work as well with that. Um, again, some rabbits, like if you turn on a vacuum cleaner, um, some rabbits don't like vacuums, so they'll kind of like, you know, stop what they're doing when the vacuum turns on. But again, if your rabbit's deaf, that's not gonna work. Um, so you kind of gotta play around and see what happens. Um, probably the majority of the rabbits out there aren't deaf, so this would probably work, but uh, just throwing that out there. But again, some rabbits are totally unfazed by different noises or even you trying to stop them with the dustpan. If the chasing is so fixated and they will not leave it alone, this is a good sign that you probably moved forward too quickly um, and your rabbits weren't ready for that amount of space. So something I would always do uh, if the chasing is just not settling down and you cannot control it, is put them back into a carrier, take them for a drive for 15 to 20 minutes, and uh, start back in the smallest space or the smaller space that you had just been in. This will make more sense uh, when I go through my uh, bonding process, um, and I'll explain that more in detail. But basically, if the chasing is going too excessively, definitely put them back in the kennel, take them for a drive. Um, it kind of settles them down and distracts them from the whole fixating chasing thing. So nipping and biting, uh, these are forms of communication in rabbits. So obviously they will be displayed during the bonding process. Um, not all rabbits will bite each other. Um, but nipping and biting needs to be stopped and controlled because it can lead to injuries. Uh, nipping is not gonna cause an injury. Even bonded rabbits nip each other to communicate. Um, it's just if that nipping leads to biting, that's when it becomes a problem. Some normal nipping behavior that is okay is again, when the rabbit's humping the other rabbit, they'll kind of nip onto their fur. That is a normal behavior and shouldn't be too worried about. Another uh, behavior that your rabbit could do is uh, when they first start to groom each other, the grooming tends to be very aggressive. They'll lick very hard and like nibble very hard. Uh, this doesn't tend to be a problem unless the other rabbit is getting very distressed by it. Um, but those behaviors tend to be fairly fine. Um, again, humping should be stopped after a couple seconds, but the grooming is fine as long as the other rabbit isn't bothered by it. Biting is normally followed by other aggressive behaviors such as lunging, grunting, growling, boxing, things like that. Normally, if those behaviors beforehand are controlled, it doesn't lead to a bite. But obviously things do happen during bonding, um, especially if things get out of hand. So you do need to be careful if the rabbit is displaying those aggressive behaviors, you need to, to put a stop to it immediately. What I do if a rabbit is, you know, looking like they're about to bite is immediately stick that dustpan between them. Um, that's a plastic barrier. They can't get through to each other. Um, that is what I always do. But ways to avoid the biting and aggressive behavior is uh, not moving too quickly through the bonding process. That's one of the main thing that causes bites and uh, fighting and injuries is if you progress your rabbits too quickly and give them too much space that they can't handle. So like I mentioned, lunging is another behavior. Uh, it can be common if the rabbit is very upset at the other bunny, um, but it should always be stopped and interrupted because that leads to bites or fighting. So if a rabbit lunges towards another rabbit, stick the dustpan between them so that they aren't able to like bite out at them. Um, this is normally gonna happen um, more towards the beginning of the bond. Um, so definitely be very active and watching them directly, don't be distracted, things like that. You wanna make sure your rabbits are safe. I will point this out there, some rabbits will go through the whole bonding process without being 
uh, or showing aggressive behavior. It totally depends on the rabbit's personality. Growling is another behavior, but it's normally associated with lunging, boxing, um, or other behaviors like that. Grunting is a very normal behavior. Um, sometimes it can be very common and very normal for males to hop around grunting. Um, I've noticed this in all of my males that I've bonded. They hop around like grunt, 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 like behind the other bunny. It's just a normal behavior. And even my fully bonded rabbits like Sterling, he does it still to this day. So it's just a thing they do. <laughs> Boxing is a behavior that can happen if a rabbit gets too close to the other rabbit and that rabbit doesn't want them there. It can cause the rabbit to box them in the face. If boxing occurs, you immediately want to shove a dustpan between them. Um, obviously, rabbits do have nails and you don't want anything being scratched or anything. Also, boxing can escalate to um, biting or fighting. Circling is a common behavior if both rabbits have not distinguished who is going to be dominant yet and they're both trying to be dominant. Um, so basically what happens is they both are trying to hump each other at the same time and they kind of go around in a circle. Circling can lead to frustration though, so it is best if this happens to um, separate them, or not separate them, but put a dustpan between them and stop the behavior. It's possible that as soon as you remove the dustpan, it will start up again. Um, but again, you know, if it's something that is getting out of control and you can't get them to stop, I would again put them in the carrier for 15 to 20 minutes, uh, go for a car ride, something like that. Thumping is a normal behavior. I'm sure every rabbit owner has heard it before. Uh, basically thumping can happen if one of the rabbits is scared, uh, which does happen a lot. Um, another thing is some rabbits will uh, thump right Right before they hump the other rabbit. It's kind of like, I don't know, a dominance thing. I'm not really sure, but it's normal and it's not really something that needs to be too concerned about unless the rabbit who's thumping literally is terrified for their life. Obviously that's an issue. <laughs> Fighting is definitely something that can happen during the bonding process and needs to be stopped as soon as possible to avoid injury. Normally, if appropriate steps have been taken in the bonding process and you haven't moved too quickly and you are doing all the de-escalation, um, you know, things that I have talked about, like the dustpan and like distracting and putting them in the carrier, things like that. Uh, normally fights won't happen. Uh, fights tend to happen um, with inexperienced bonders or with rabbits who are basically not gonna work out type of thing. Normally this happens when a person um, puts the rabbits in too big of an area that they're not ready for, a fight will break out. If a fight happens, you need to immediately stop it basically by any means possible. Um, if it's a very mild fight, you know, you might be able to get away with just shoving a dustpan between them. Um, but obviously if your rabbits are more rowdy during bonding, I would recommend wearing gloves um, for this reason because if a fight did happen or break out, you wanna be protected because rabbits will bite anything in their way during a fight. Um, so a dustpan is one method. If that's not working, you can literally shove your hands and try to force them apart. Honestly, I think the best method is to literally just, you know, separate them as much as possible. But again, if you're following the bonding things that I am recommending, um, this shouldn't be an issue. Um, obviously there are situations where rabbits literally hate each other and they don't want to be friends. This is more common for them to start fighting. And in that case, um, it would be if you are going through the bonding process and you are doing everything step by step, going slowly, de-escalating everything, and your rabbits still hate each other, that might be a sign they just aren't meant to be together. If a rabbit does end up scuffling or fighting during the bonding process and they are all fine, you know, no one got an injury, anything like that, it is vitally important not to separate them if you do think this bond is going to work out. If you separate them after a fight and basically end the bonding session, it's gonna be very difficult for your rabbits to trust each other again because that's the last memory they have of each other is fighting. So it's very important if your rabbits like started scuffling and you immediately stopped it and you there was no injuries, um, it's very important you do not just separate them. What I would do is put them back in the carrier, take them for a drive, something like that, so that their last memory of each other isn't like, I wanna kill you type of thing. I have had scuffles during fight, uh, during bonding and um, the bond has still worked out. I have never had a fight that has led to an injury though. 
Um, but I don't know if that's because I've always de-escalated it or if my rabbits have just never gotten that far. I don't really know. So after a scuffle and you drive them around in the car for a little bit, I would start back at the beginning of the bonding process. Again, this will be in my bonding process video on the steps to take. Uh, basically start back at the beginning and go through the whole thing again, uh, because obviously there is a lot of issues there still and they need to be worked out appropriately. Obviously, if someone is injured, you need to take them to the vet as soon as possible. A simple bite mark, even if you're like, oh, I can control the bleeding, it'll be fine. Um, that is not safe. Um, rabbits can get abscesses very, very easily. Uh, they could get bacteria in there and it needs to be checked out by vet as soon as possible. If this happens at night, you need to be driving to an emergency vet. Um, it is not something that you should just wait and see what happens type of thing. But again, I don't want to scare people because I personally have bonded, you know, several rabbits and I've never had an injury before. So ignoring each other is another behavior that can be common in bonding. And it's actually kind of a good behavior, but it can also be bad. So ignoring each other can be positive in the sense that the rabbit feels comfortable enough around the other bunny not to be always fixated on them. The only time that ignoring each other can be bad is if you had moved your rabbit that's into too big of an area too quickly and they're literally just ignoring each other the whole time and not interacting, you're not gonna progress in the bonding and this could actually be harmful in the bonding process. But if you were taking the appropriate steps and going slowly, um, you know, ignoring each other for, you know, 30 minutes while they take a nap, like that's a good sign. But if the rabbits are literally spending time on opposite sides of the pen and they're ignoring each other the entire time, this can be an issue because if they have progressed too quickly in the bonding process, they can start establishing dominance over their side of the pen, especially if they're in too big of a pen too quickly. That's why you always wanna go very slow because rabbits are very, very, very territorial creatures. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna start owning one side of the pen and when the other rabbit tries to cross over, they're gonna attack or lunge or growl or you know show territorial behavior. Um, so that's when ignoring each other can be bad, but if you're taking things slow, honestly, it shouldn't be that big of an issue. Another behavior that is a good sign is if you're, one of the rabbits is turning their back to the other bunny. This means that they trust them enough to not always have them in their line of eyesight, and um, that's a positive sign because it means they're starting to trust each other. Grooming themselves is another positive sign. This means that they are in a relaxed enough state to groom themselves. A rabbit who is stressed, scared, or afraid another rabbit's gonna attack them is not gonna groom themselves. So if your rabbit is grooming themselves, that's a very, very positive sign. Grooming the other bunny is also a wonderful sign. Please note though that some rabbits don't even groom each other um, by the time that they are officially bonded. Um, I've had rabbits who were officially bonded and one of the bunnies had never groomed the other rabbit and it took them like a month or two to finally groom each other. That can be normal, um, but if grooming does occur, um, that's super positive. But just remember that sometimes only one bunny is going to be the one grooming at first. Um, but obviously this means they trust each other, they're starting to like each other, um, positive sign. <laughs> Laying down is another positive sign. A rabbit will not lay down and relax uh, if they are stressed or upset or scared of another bunny. So um, laying down, is always a good sign. Flopping is also another super positive sign during bonding. Not all rabbits are huge floppers, so it does depend on your personal rabbit. Um, but if any of the rabbit is standing there and they literally like flop on their side, that's a super good sign. That means they're very happy, they're content, they feel safe, um, all positive signs. But remember, some rabbits literally just don't flop as much, so um, if it doesn't happen, it's not a huge deal. Laying by each other, again, a good sign. This means they are starting to like each other and feel safe. Eating, eating is another really good sign. A rabbit who is stressed or scared is not going to feel comfortable enough to eat around another bunny. Food should not be introduced into the bonding process right away, just because um, a lot of rabbits are very territorial over food or food aggressive. 
Um, so because of that, it doesn't, you don't want to introduce it right away, but I will go over that in the bonding process video. But basically once they are able to have food during the bonding process and they're both eating, um, that's a really positive sign. So that's basically it for all of the behaviors that you might see during bonding. I'm sure I have missed some, but I hope I covered, you know, the main ones and now you kind of know what to look out for and what to do if those behaviors happen please watch the next video that is going to be put out. This is going to be the bonding process. So this is gonna go over, you know, all the steps to take in order to bond your rabbits. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys very soon on a new video. Bye.